What's your so it's your boy back again the one and only Keith Allen your motivation guy the one who believes in you the one that is rooting for you and I'm also your number one fan listen you may be doubting your future you may be you know just losing faith in yourself or in your ability to play this game but even also in different areas of your life but I'm here to tell you that this is just the beginning for you keep your head up keep going uh, don't give in to the negativity don't give in to the negative thoughts that you are meditating on but instead I want you to think positive I want you to think about your future in a positive way because if you are still here today and you're still breathing I'm telling you right now there is hope for you my friend so keep going don't give up the dream Today we're going to talk about competitive Fortnite and what to expect if you've decided to throw your hat in the ring and start playing to be the best. You know, some of these tips you might have heard of before, however, some of you probably haven't experienced firsthand, you know, unless you've already played in some sort of like competitive match, but don't fret my guys because we got you covered. So here are six differences between competitive Fortnite and casual Fortnite. You guys ready for this? We'll get that bunch of crunch and let's get this going. The first thing that you need to understand about going into competitive Fortnite is that the players in arena and tournaments are going to be much more skilled than the players you've encountered in casual. This is a no-brainer. However, there are still some difficult features that you need to know before you step in foot in the field, especially if you've never played arena before. Like if you're planning on grinding arena mode, then you need to know how to progress in the mode and what it means for you, right? When a season first starts off, every player, including the big name pros, are going to be playing inside Division 1 matches. In fact, if you're lucky, you might even find yourself getting derailed by a popular player as they climb the ranks. However, don't feel like you're stuck playing with highly skilled players all the time. Like, the more time passes from the start date of Arena, the pros will be well on their way towards the upper division rank. Soon, you're going to be playing with others who are around your own skill level. So, keep grinding in Arena and just get out of Open League. Once you've reached Contender League, you're going to start noticing yourself either keeping up the pace or just coming to a halt where you can't seem to progress any further and so if you can't seem to break out of a certain division that just means you really just need to practice on your skills so you can go further and so this could be a good way to know where you are currently at the terms of your experience something that you wouldn't be able to notice if you've only been playing casual matches now if you're interested in practicing your aiming skills then check out aim labs by clicking on the link below what is aim labs good question well it's a program specifically designed to help you guys improve your aim and a variety of different games Games such as Fortnite and Valorant and Rainbow Six Siege and more. Better yet, it gives you incredible feedback, including statistics that can help you see your improvement go to the next level. Storm Surge is a word that you might have heard used by the pros. It's a rare event that happens during a match, which odds are you have never experienced firsthand. So what is it and how exactly does it work? Well, in Fortnite, there is a mechanic that helps weed out players as the game progresses. As we all know, the game starts off with 100 players dropping to the island and eliminating each until, you know, there's one player or just one team remains. However, in a competitive match, the rate at which players get eliminated can be slower than you're used to. This is because in competitive, you know, they're just more skilled than, you know, casual players. And so this in turn affects how quickly they get eliminated and how many will be just still running around. You know, Storm Surge will kick in when the game detects that there are too many players still alive during any given storm phase. Normally, these players would be eliminated just making Storm Surge quite rare. However, when everyone is skilled and can survive longer, there's going to be a lot of players alive. So, to counter this, the game will evaluate, you know, which players have dealt the most damage during the match. If you've just been taking the initiative and have gone to eliminate a few players, then odds are you should be safe. However, for those of you who haven't gotten any eliminations and are just, just trying to survive, you might find yourself in the bottom of the list and most likely be really affected by the storm surge from here the game will choose those players with the least damage output and start just chipping away at their health eventually storm surge will end when the game detects that the playing field has been leveled however do not be discouraged if you find your health slowly depleting you can still make a comeback you know all you need to do is just find an enemy and just deal some damage and so if you're lucky this will move you up on the list of players with the most damage dealt and put you in a much safer position the end game can actually be quite different if all you have ever played is casual. Once again, the big change here isn't anything to do with the game mode itself, but rather the pacing of the game. And so if you played a casual game of Fortnite before, the player count will often dwindle down to like two before the final circle like even closes. In fact, the game will usually end before the storm circle even reaches the final stage. However, the truth is, is there are a lot more phases of the storm which most casual players are completely unaware of. After the circle closes to its minimum size, it's gonna begin to move forcing players to stay within the circle. While this would seem simple enough to grasp, the truth is when skill levels are taken into account, 
you're going to be seeing plenty of editing and building as players try to gain the high ground and keep up with the storm. This is where building becomes extremely important guys and why you need to master if you want to survive in this stage of the game. If you've ever watched a competitive match unfold amongst the pros, you know, you will have a mental image of just how much building can be involved during the stage. This is what the tarper is usually in charge of in a trios match. Like you need to be able to maneuver through and just really create tunnels to follow the storm circle. Otherwise, you might end up just outside where you're going to take heavy damage at this stage of the game. Players in this stage of the game will be constantly build battling and you know, you're going to want to be as far up as possible so you have less chances of just players dropping in on you from a box above. It's important that you always keep track of your match during this time guys. Like the map cap for a competitive game for Fortnite is uh, like 500 per resource. So you should be able to carry 1500 mats when you combine wood, stone and metal. After that, you're not going to be able to harvest any more resources. So the best strategy is to find a good landing spot where you can start filling up your inventory. And so once you reach the end game, most of your mats are going to just, you know, going into to really just keeping you off the ground and moving you, you know, through the circles as things change. You're also going to need to rely on kills to refill your ammo and mats since you won't have access to chests during this time. If you think, you know, having your ammo maxed out was great for a casual game of Fortnite, think again. You're going to probably spend your ammunition trying to take walls and fighting enemies. So that refresh becomes so important. You know, the Fortnite loot pool is always changing even after a transition from one season to the next. And so we've seen weapons and equipment come and just go, allowing for many unique experiences. But if you do plan on going competitive, you need to understand that the loot pool will always be different and Epic is always testing the waters to see which items are going to make the final cut. So the best way to prepare for this guys is to keep up to date with the meta so you can go and just know exactly what you're working with at any given time. You know, you don't want your entire strategy to revolve around a piece of equipment you are not gonna be able to find. Not only that, but you also wanna keep in mind, you know, the loophole on which weapons have been added later on the season. And this is gonna affect the loadout other players are going to be going for, as well as whether or not, you know, long range weapons are in play. So check out the loot and don't forget to also just check the fish types. Checking which fish are currently in the pool can be easy to overlook if you haven't been using them. You know, scoring in a competitive match is different from scoring in a casual game. Here, you know, eliminations, victories, and surviving the storm is going to give you guys a set amount of points that are going to be tallied up for your overall score. The importance of scoring is also introduced in Arena. Here, and I mean like right here, it's a culmination of the season, which determines whether or not you can participate in some of the more exclusive competitions or even leave a good impression on social media. So keep in mind guys, having a good Arena score and reaching the Champions League are an essential part of building a reputation within the Fortnite community. You know, some tournaments, you're actually gonna be playing more than one round of Fortnite with the culmination of your score, you know, being that eventually really determines where you place. So while you're always gonna be aiming for that victory out, winning the match won't always guarantee that you come in first. And so as a casual player transitioning into competitive, you need to make sure to take that initiative and just calculate exactly what you need to get to where you want to end up. And so this means learning to play aggressive if you're a more passive player so you have that skill set whenever you need it. After all guys, you never know when you're going to need that extra boost to put you on top of other competitors. Don't forget to check out Aim Labs for a fully customizable experience that can help you get to that next level. Gold bars also work differently in competitive as well. Like gold bars are an excellent resource for upgrading and buying weapons. They're also great for using vending machines. In casual Fortnite, your gold bar count carries over from game to game, which is so cool. That means if you earn 100 gold in one match, you can use that in the next match. However, competitive Fortnite flips that script a bit. Like in this case, every player starts with zero. You're going to need to earn gold by eliminating players, completing bounties, and collecting them from chests. So if you plan to incorporate gold into your loot route, you're going to need to take note of where the upgrade stations are and also just keep track of what you really need to buy. If you can loot an item, it might not be the best idea to really stock up on that item in the vending machines. Like if you're really you just press and you need something right away, the gold could really save your life. So don't forget to take gold bars into account when planning ahead. But you course, tell me that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, this is your motivation guy, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm so proud of you. I really, really am. I'm just proud of the fact, you know, that you just haven't given up. You know, you're still grinding. You're still going after your dream. And that really just makes me happy, man. I really believe in you guys. I really love you all. Peace to you. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word to all your friends because they need to hear some good motivation and some good tips on this channel as well. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.